Okay, back on the Jeep. It's Monday after work. Wanted to show you what I found out. Look at that. Just this side moved. Now both sides move. Slide back and forth a little bit. I also took the cover off the transmission a little bit ago. You can see down in here. Oh, look at that. Got a little bit of movement on the gear there. I don't have any movement on that collar still. So this thing still may be kind of locked up, but I sprayed it down with some penetrating oil on top. We'll let it sit for a few more days. Put the top of the shifter back on and see if this thing will pop out of gear or go into gear. The lighting situation is probably horrible, I understand. I just got my shop light down here. But I think I do have a little bit figured out on the transmission. It looks like the front seal is leaking which is kind of throwing me off. I'm not sure if it's bad or if it's the fact that I've got the transmission completely filled. You know, the fluid, the amount of fluid that I have in here right now is probably three times what it requires. You can see there's a seal on the back of the transmission. It's leaking. It's leaking out of where the speedometer goes into the back of the tail, tail shaft housing. So I'm guessing the only thing that I can think of is when the transmission laps the oil up with the gears it's traveling down the rear tail shaft of the transmission up to that seal and then out the back I mean it that's the only thing I can really think of if anybody else knows more about these transmissions if you would maybe leave a possible solution down in the comments below would be greatly appreciated but I don't think there's anything major wrong with this I mean if it was cracked I would think that it'd be leaking out of the crack out of the side of the housing. So I think we may be in pretty good shape. It's time now to give some attention to this carburetor for the old Jeep. Now I've had this carburetor soaking in this old coffee can full of gas for about a month now. And it's cleaned it up pretty good. But now we need to pop it apart and check and see what the inside looks like. Those little squirrels. You can see the amount of trash that was in this. More little critters. But the inside of the car bear looks fairly clean there's a little bit of trash down on the bottom of that but the plunger looks like it is wrinkled up on one side so I may as well just go ahead and order a carburetor kit and rebuild this while I got it apart that way when I throw it on there I know that it won't leak fuel everywhere I'll go ahead and get a carburetor kit for this since I've got it apart already and it's fairly inexpensive there was some trash down in the bottom of this, and that plunger is swollen out to where I don't think it's going to work like it's supposed to. Now before the video goes any further, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Half Calf Best Choice Coffee. Now this is a medium roast, full bodied, balanced flavor. <laughs> I'm just joking around. I uh, just have the coffee cans, like I said, to put parts in so I don't lose them. Hopefully I got you with that. If I did, put it down in the comments section. 
Okay, a little bit of an update at the end of this video. Got the carburetor apart. I was guessing whenever I thought the carburetor kit was going to be relatively expense inexpensive. I bought a lot of carburetor kits for older carburetors before, and the only place that had these carburetor kits was O'Reilly Auto Parts and KaiserWillies.com. Now, the O'Reilly's one was $47, and it had two gaskets. It had the gasket in between these two pieces, and it had the gasket for the top of the uh, fuel bowl. No other gaskets with it, and I thought that was pretty ridiculous. Didn't even have a bottom gasket for where it goes onto the manifold. But Kaiser Willys had the entire kit where all I actually need is the shell of my carburetor. They give me all of the gaskets that I need. They even provide the rods, like the rods that move up and down for the carburetor. I think it even had the screws for it. I'm not sure. I'd have to check on that again. They even have gauges that show how far I need to turn the metering screws in for these for these little meter screws to get this thing to where I throw it on there. It starts up and runs perfect. I don't have to fool with it anymore. So I've got to wait on that for about a week. So my plan is I bought a, another distributor cap, the correct one, off of Rock Auto. O'Reilly's wanted about 14 bucks. I bought the one off of Rock Auto with shipping and everything for about 10. So I saved a little bit of money. I could have went and bought that one and threw it on here, but without the carburetor kit, it's kind of uh, a waste in a way because I got to wait for the carburetor kit. That's the other updates on the Jeep. I also picked up some other wheels and tires for it, and I'll show you those in just a second. I was looking on Facebook Marketplace the other day, and a guy just so happened to be parting out a few old Ford trucks. He had a stack of wheels. I asked him about them. He said he had four that he would sell me that hold air. Tires are pretty much shot, but 10 bucks a piece. I have those other wheels, but I don't have tires on them, so I need ones that'll air up where I can move this little Jeep around. So I didn't think that was too bad of a price. The guy actually lived in Potosi, Missouri, which is a little over an hour from me, but he worked in Cuba, which is 15 minutes, so he met me after work and loaded them up in the back of Johnny 5 here. We'll throw them on the Jeep here in a few minutes so I can move the thing around. I know what you were thinking. You probably seen those wheels and were screaming at your phone or your TV saying, Zane, those won't fit. Remember, this is just so I can roll it around. I got those other wheels right over there. These tires are shot. These wheels are the factory Ford wheels, nothing special. So they'll work for right now. Okay, that is much better. Now when it comes to moving this little Jeep around, I don't have to worry about dragging the rims through the dirt. But the big part is the waiting game. Now I gotta wait for the carburetor kit and I also have to wait for the distributor cap. It should be in by the end of this week, so by about this time next week, I should have another video on putting that on there, and then we'll get to, we'll get to put, putting the plug wires on as well, wrapping up a few other things. May check on the transmission then as well. But I may get a little bit of flack for plasma cutting those wheels. I had the plasma cut the front two, and all I had to do was cut the ring out from the center so it would fit over the hub for the Jeep. Now, I didn't get into where the lug nuts bolt to the wheel i didn't get into that surface at all and you other truck guys out there watching this will know the importance of having a good set of rollers for going and picking up other projects now what i mean by rollers is wheels and tires that hold air they may not have tread on them they may have cord showing something along those lines but as long as they hold air to where if you need to go and get a project you can switch them out and roll them on the up on the back of your trailer or your rollback or whatever you're doing now these wheels are five on five and a half, so they will fit that International Scout whenever I go to mess around with it. One important thing I would like to throw out there and say, if you're working on one of these older Willys Jeeps, the driver's side lug studs are left-handed thread, so think backwards when you're trying to take the wheel off or all you'll be doing is tightening the lugs down. And I'm glad I came out the other day and sprayed these lug nuts down with some penetrating oil because they were definitely tight. My Chinesium breaker bar bit the dust. I had a cheater pipe on the handle too, probably didn't help out very much, but this thing's broken. I had another Proto in my other toolbox to replace it, so no big loss there. 
I would also say if you guys would check out my buddies at Central Oregon Shenanigans in the Fox Shop as well. They have a lot of great videos on OBS Ford truck content. Go over there, check them out. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to them as well. But thank you very much for watching this video. If you would, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment or a question down below. Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you're into. And just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. As soon as I get the carburetor kit and the distributor cap for the old Jeep, we'll go ahead and do another video on it, but that'll wrap it up for right now. But thanks again for watching. My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.